trouble creating a card. We've all had it. Whether you're a beginner or an avid stamper, it's sometimes difficult to come up with an idea. Well, I'm going to give you a little trick today that's going to make it easy as one, two, three. And um, it's going to just give you a little starting point, a little kickstart, and then you can take it from there and go uh, just go running with whatever ideas you come up, come up with. I'm going to show you some ways that you can change and vary those ideas or kick it up a notch. So um, stay tuned. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up down below. You can also see links to my Facebook page and my blog. On my blog, you can sign up for my mailing list. And if you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. So stay in touch. And um, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so here's our first example of what I'm calling easy as one, two, three card. Basically, what you want is one strip of some kind, whether it's something stamped or a piece of cardstock or a ribbon or a line of embellishments, something. And then you want two layers of a base. So I have my basic card base here and a layer on top. This could be cardstock, DSP, whichever you prefer. And then you want three things that are going to be your focal point in some way, whether it's three images, two images and a sentiment, something that's going to add up to three, or you can have three images and your sentiment could be separate. But anyway, so it's one, two, and three, one strip, two card bases, three focal points. So I'm going to use with you today the Seaside Notion stamp set. This is retiring with a 2021 annual catalog, so it will not carry over um, after May 3rd. Um, so it is one that I used to use a lot and I will miss it. But anyway, one last time, here we go, a good hurrah. All right, so what we're going to do is first start with a SIP card, stamps, ink, and paper. No embellishments, no special tools, just something that's quick and easy with paper and stamps and ink, of course. Can't do it without the ink. Well, if you had DSP paper, I suppose you could. I'm going to use the little sand element here, or it could be bubbles if you do it vertically. But I'm going to use this as my vertical strip, so to speak. So I'm not gonna have a separate piece of paper for this. I'm gonna just make a line, a strip of sand going down. this part of my card here. Okay, so that's simply gonna count as my strip on this one strip. Okay, then you want two card bases, two layers of your card base. So your folded piece, that's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then your layer, which is five and a quarter, by four. Very simple. There you go there. Now I'm going to have three little images. I'm going to mat them with um, a little bit darker color for contrast. So this is crumb cake. The base is vanilla. This is soft suede. The little squares are one and a half inches and these are one and a quarter square. Okay. So before I mount them, I'm going to stamp some of my little seashells on here. So I'm using tone on tone, keeping with those browns. I'm going to use, let's say this little Nautilus shell. I'm going to stamp that right there in the middle. So we have one. And I'm going to use this little sand dollar. That'll be on another one, two, and I'm going to use part of this whelk shell. Now it's not all gonna fit on there, but that's okay, it can hang off a little bit. Just gonna make sure I get the main part on there. And there we go, now we're going to mount those. Okay, 
I can add my sentiment on the inside or decide what I want to do with it later or how nice to make this as a gift just a collection of note cards and a person can write whatever they want inside there and now we're going to arrange these on here in threes somehow so I'm just going to offset them a little bit and I'm going to raise one of them up this middle one I think on dimensional dots one raised up they're all overlapping okay and we can put a little something down there let's put thinking of you I'm going to stamp that in black so it really stands out and I should have done this before because if I goof it's going to be a little bit of a problem so quick little note card one two three one strip two bases, three elements. And there's your thinking of you. So here's a partner card that I did using a little bit more than just stamp sync and paper. I added a little bit of the linen thread, made a little loop and tucked it underneath there with some glue dots and then put my square over it. Instead of doing the layers, I just cut these out with my stitch shapes, circles, ovals, and squares, obviously the square. And that way I didn't need another layer. That just gives a little bit of extra um, interest there with the stitched edging. But these are going to be retiring. Um, so if you're interested in those, you have to get them before May 3rd. And hopefully they don't sell out. All right, so those are two versions of same card, same layout. Okay, so let me show you some more. Here's one with similar colors. It's going to be just a little bit different. We're going to hold this one horizontally this time. And I'm going to do a little bit of sand, some tone on tone with crumb cake for my background. Use it as a background. I'm going to stamp off first so it's a little bit more subtle. Just want that little bit of super super light texture don't want it looking too plain but I don't want it to stand out I want my focal points to shine through okay so here's my strip I put my sentiment on there this is also a sentiment from the stamp set every stamp I'm using today is from the stamp set so you don't have to go anywhere else you get it all right here and this is going to go horizontally across the bottom so that's my one strip, my two layers, vanilla and crumb cake again. This is soft suede. This by the strip, by the way, is three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter. And this time I'm going to, instead of making my focal points raised up here, I thought it might be fun to cut these out with my stitched circles and have my focal points actually stamped underneath, sort of poking through like windows. So I haven't tried this yet. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to run this one through my die cut machine right here. Okay. Well, there we go and we're going to layer this looks like Swiss cheese doesn't it making me hungry all right so now I'm going to put my seashells underneath there and I'm going to do them in black just so it shows up nicely and I do have the black here for it to coordinate with all right so we're going to obviously want to make sure they're in a position that they will show through okay so i'm going to take my black and obviously before i glue this down permanently even though this could fit in there i just want to make sure it's going to be all good all right so that can kind of fit right in there so if i make a mistake 
I can always change that out. Okay, and then let's use the little Nautilus on the other side. That also will fit in there. All right, and then I'm going to use the coral because that can fit right in there and the whole thing will not fit in, but it's if some of it doesn't, it's okay. I don't have to be so precise about that. So I'm going to sort of eyeball it and then remove my layer. Okay, right about there. Let's keep our fingers crossed it works. Yay! There we go. Okay. Of course, if it didn't work, what do you do? Just take another piece of um, cardstock that's going to cover the whole thing and use that for another project. All right, let's glue it down. Okay, and with the stitch shapes, you the part that you keep is going to have a little bit of a ridge on the outside, so that gives a little bit of definition to the um, outside part that you're keeping there. So I kind of like that. Some people were wondering, oh, is that okay? Is that... So, yeah, it's okay. All right, I'm going to put that across there. And you know what? That would have even looked nice with a black strip, wouldn't it? Let's see. Ooh, I like that even better. So let's just change it up. See, being a little impromptu here. Let's do something a little different. Put this down. And let's see if one of my other oval punches works. Okay, I do like that better. And then, of course, we can add some embellishments on that. Or, even better, I am going to take one of the shells, maybe that Nautilus again might fit on there nicely. I'm going to make sure I clean off the black. And I'm going to stamp it very, very lightly in the background with plum cake. I'm going to stamp it off. And see, so you get a very, very light. Let's try it even a third time. Oh, I think I'm going to go a third time. So I'm going to stamp off twice. I want it super light. Oh, nice. That's nice. Okay, and of course, dimensionals. Okay, so start with basically one strip, two layers, three focal points, and your sentiment can be maybe a fourth or it could be one of your third. So keep to that little formula and you've got yourself a really nice card. So here are the three that we did in those color tones. I'm going to show you a couple more. Okay, now here's a fun thing to do. Let's start with pre peacock and a layer of white. And we're going to make our strip not with a stamp this time, but actually using some ink, but using some Stampin' Blends to make a line that reminds me of the ocean. So in order to do that, we are going to take a piece of scrap paper. And we're going to hold this one horizontally as well. And I'm going to rip this in half in sort of a little curvy shape. Then I'm going to use it as a mask on the top and the bottom of my card. So now nothing moves around. I'm going to just tack this down a little bit. Because this is going on my card base, I'm just going to put just a teeny spot of glue in the back there to just hold it down. I don't care if it makes a mess later because it's going to just be hidden on my card base. Okay, and then with this you can 
decide where you want that little band to be. So that's your strip, so to speak. And because it's curvy, it's okay. In fact, I might not want it exactly lined up there. So you can either tear it again or you can just sort of offset it because I use a long piece, so I don't necessarily want it matching up exactly. Tack these papers down with some washi tape so it doesn't move when you're using your brushes. Here's my blending brush. I added this little clip on here. I got that elsewhere. Stamp Out doesn't sell that, but just if I were looking at it on the back, I know that's my blues. I have one for each, each sort of color family. I think maybe I should tape this down just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to use three blues. I'm going to use Balmy Blue. I'm going to use Bermuda Bay and Pre Peacock. I'm going to start with my um, lightest color first. And I'll show you a different one that I did um, where I did vertically. And I started with the lighter color on the top and then as it went down, it got darker, sort of like the ocean is. So I'm doing this one horizontally. I could try to do that a little bit this way as it goes across. In fact, you know what? I think I will move this down just a little bit so I have a little bit thicker strip, so to speak. A little bit more to play with. There we go. Okay, so that'll be fun. So this might be a little more tricky because I'm going to try to keep the lighter blue here. So I'll do the lighter blue on top, middle color in the middle, and the darker on the bottom. Okay, so my blending brush, I'm going to just tap on the ink pad. And I'm going to start swirling off the paper and go onto the paper. Just so if there's any strong ink on there. I don't want that going on my cardstock right away. I can always add more, but you don't want it looking splotchy. You can always blend more on there as you go. So this is going to sort of give an ombre look. All right, let's do some Bermuda Bay. Just going to brush off on my scrap paper. You can see there's nothing left there, so I can go to the next color. And I'm going to come in from the side this time just to get that middle. So that has that little bit of that green color in there. I'm going to blend that into the balmy blue a bit. Brush that off and then go to my pretty peacock. Coming off the bottom. See how dark that was? And it sort of got a streaky look to it. So I want to go in swirls as I work my way in there. See what I mean? You can always add. You can't take it away. So in that case, you just turn it into something else. If it's not what you want, use it for another project. Okay, I want to put just a little bit more down at the bottom here. I really want to carry that color in. Okay, that I think it's going to be great. <gasps> Look at that, isn't that awesome? I love that. Love it. And look how nice it looks now on the pretty peacock. I'm just going to wiggle this free. Isn't that beautiful? Looks like the ocean splashing. I just love it. And I love because I use the torn paper. You have these little ridges down here. It doesn't look too finely cut. Okay, it has that real watercolor look to it. Okay, so just to keep this, this one's going to be a little bit um, stepped up for my first card. So let me show you that one. 
Here's the first card that I did it vertically. And again, just a sip card, stamps, ink, and paper. I did the same technique, just vertically, and I stamped my images, three, and my sentiment right on there. I popped this up with dimensional dots just to add a little bit more interest. And so that's your simple card. So let's just kick this up a notch by, I'm going to stamp two of my images right on there. I'm just gonna pop one of them up. So it'll be a little bit, a little bit different, not much, doesn't have to be kicked up a lot, just to give it a little bit more interest. So since my seahorse is facing this way, I'm gonna put him over here. Okay. And I'm going to do my sentiment next because I can always move my shells in a little bit different position. I'm gonna put this right down here. That works nicely that it's just underneath there. A little crooked, but please forgive me on that. And then let's add a couple little shells. We'll do some smaller ones this time. And I'll do this guy here. And then we'll do a little clam shell. Maybe the clam can go over here. Bring some interest to that side of the car. All right, I'm gonna pop that up. I'm gonna use my black dimensional dots. Some people didn't even realize we have black. They come two sizes to the packet, the big ones and the little ones. Okay, just because I want this to, the card sock underneath it is dark. I know the top layer is white, but I just wanted this to blend in. Okay, so now I'm going to take, actually I forgot, I wanted to take, instead of the clamshell, I'm gonna cover that up with this. I'm gonna pop that up with dimensional dots. That's what I wanted to do to uh, pick it up a notch. So let me do that. And you know what, I'm gonna let it hang over a little bit to add a little bit of interest and also to hide what's underneath it. And then we can tie a piece of twine on the top there. In the new catalog, we are getting back different kinds of twine. We didn't. We have a set of neutral colors that are gonna come in a pack. This one happens to be a little bit thicker, Baker's Twine. This was an old one. I didn't get the new ones yet. I'm going to tie just a little bow up here. So it will come in neutral colors. Like I said, white, black, smoky slate, crumb cake, and vanilla. Okay, so you see how my bow is going in the wrong way? I'm going to do a little lesson on bow tying. I did this once before. Um, Actually, I think I might bring that down a little bit. Okay, so I have my bow going the wrong direction. So that meant I tied it the wrong direction. So I'm going to just cut this first, and then I'll show you. Okay, the way I do it, I go left over right and under for my first piece. And then whichever part is down, when I pull it tight, is the part I'm going to make my bow with, my first loop. Now, if I want it to go in the opposite direction or contrary to my first string that's going across, I'm going to go counterclockwise. So think opposite, counterclockwise, it's gonna go in the opposite direction of your first uh, wrap around. If you want to go in the same direction, then you're going to go clockwise. So here we go, I'm going clockwise and there we go facing in the same direction. So that's my little hint to you. And I'm actually gonna bring this down a little bit here. I'm gonna put a little glue dot underneath there to hold it so it doesn't slip. 
And if you wanted to, you could have just wrapped it around the white. It's up to you. I kind of like the contrast. Now, if your twine is smaller than that glue dot, make sure you kind of curl up the glue dot. And I kind of did that a little bit in there before. So that's really nice. I like that. And in fact, I think I'm, I even like it fraying there a little bit. So I'm going to just unravel that. Kind of reminds me of rope. Okay, so that's kicked up a little bit of a notch from here. Let's do a raised paddle. So I'm going to do that um, blending brush technique. On the inside, we're going to raise up the second layer. So let's start. I'm going to start with our the light blue. I'm going to clean that off from the peacock. See how nicely it cleans off, even though it might be stained here. Just going to rub it off and it's okay. I'm going to start off the card. Now it's not going to matter too much how wide I go here because it's going to be covered. And I'll show you what we're going to tear the peacock this time. Look how nice and soft these blending brushes go on. With that nice soft look. I'm going to blend those all together. Okay, so that's fine. So now we're going to actually tear this. This is going to cover most of the card, but we're going to tear it in between to reveal this in here. So I'm going to tear a piece off that will fit here. So I'm going to start about here. I'm going to tear in an upward motion. And again, I want a little bit of contour, a waviness in and out. And, and that will go on like that. And then if you wanted the same to be over here, you could do that and then just cut this with your trimmer or you, because I want it to look a little different and I'm just, since I already have this like this, I'm just going to tear it a little bit more over here. Now this time, okay, obviously you're gonna tear up with my left hand because I want this texture to show. out just a little bit just so it's a little different okay maybe I don't want that tooth in there I always adjust it okay so I think I want a little bit more off of there so start with little and you can always do more and if you take too much off you can just come back in with your blending brushes Okay, I like that. Let's glue it down. You could glue it down with, I'm going to just use all-purpose glue, or you could put it up with some dimensional dots or the dimension, the strips, foam strips, which would make more sense to, because you want to get it all the way around. Um, we can do that either way, horizontally or vertically. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out this time. And just going to fussy cut. So I'm going to show you. You can take your blending brush. This one is my brown. Just go over your stamped image. I just did this on scrap paper. Just to add a little hint of color. Don't have to do much. Don't have to use markers or anything. Just get that nice soft color. I did this one in So Saffron. And this one is Crumb Cake. And this one I just did in the balmy blue. And then we can also cut those out and attach them onto our card. Now this one is tricky. I wish there was a die cut for this. It is tricky getting around here. Now when you're cutting, there are different techniques based on the image, whether it's a sketchy look or a thick line or a thin line. When you're doing something that's sort of sketchy like this, you don't want to necessarily go right up against the line you want to leave a little bit of a border all the way around because you will never get into every little nook and cranny there so you may as well just leave that border now my suggestion when you're cutting out the seahorse start with the tail that's the hardest part to get around that little loop in there and it's easier when you have more cardstock to hold on to trust me i've done plenty of them 
So I'm going to start on this piece here, leaving ever so slightly of a border because you're not going to necessarily get every little piece cut out. So you want it to be uniform. And I'm going to then come down this way and get in there. And these snips are wonderful for getting in nice and tight. I'm going to cut away some of that excess, and then I can come in this way. Okay. All right, so there you go. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish cutting that out. we go. Now we can arrange our little seashells and our seahorse like so and add our sentiment. I'm going to add my sentiment right in there and keep your fingers crossed I don't mess this up. I should have thought of it earlier but you know how that goes. Okay one thing to do I should have mentioned this before Sometimes your decals on your rubber stamps might be might have gone on slightly off from your letters. So one thing I like to do is check out the alignment on my grid paper first. And now because of this print, that's what I'm going to try to get straight. If you look at the script part, it is a little off. It's a little high on the on the TH part and a little lower on the G. So if I line that up, then the print is going to look off. So it's the print part that's more uniform and that's what you want to make sure you get straight. I'm just going to practice here and look that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to try it on here. There! Okay! That worked. Okay so now we're going to put these on. I think like that might be good. But you know what? I'm thinking this looks a little plain, so I'm going to come in with my sand again, and I'm going to do tone on tone and do some pretty peacock little bits of sand. So see how it can kind of develop here? Stamping off a little. Like I said, you can always do more later if you want. Okay, I like that much better. And then we'll put those on with the dimensionals. For this one, I'm going to use some of the minis because that will fit right on his head and down by the tail. I might even cut one of these teeny tiny guys in half. To get it down on the tail there. So I'm going to tuck that in a little bit there. Okay, so that looks good. And of course, we could decorate a little something on the inside. This seems to be hanging over just a little bit. I will trim that off. So there are three in the Pretty Peacock. Same concept, got that tearing look and the masking look there. And um, you still have your strip, your two layers, and your three elements, your three focal points. Your strip can be two layers, of course, too. As long as you have that element of a strip there, I'm going to layer the strip of DSP onto shaded spruce. And this is the DSP that is also retiring from Whale of a Time Suite. Has some really nice, um, it coordinates with the Whale Punch. Has some seaside elements, seaweed and um, textural things and turtles and jellyfish. A lot of fun stuff in there. Okay, you're, um, you can see this was the back of this. 
and I'm using the seahorses here. That's going to, that's my one. And this is going to be my, my number two, the two layers to the base. And we'll put this on here. Quick and easy with the DSP. And we'll put three things on here. We're going to use our circles this time. So instead of cutting them out, I'm going to um, just put them, put them on here like this. So we're going to stamp our images. And I'm going to do this in, um, I think, not black again. I want it to show up nicely. Okay, so there's one. There's two. And we'll do the top of the seahorse. I know that won't fit in the whole circle, but we can always just cut out part of it like we did on the other. Here's my little guy, a little mini, and we have your numbered plates. It tells you easy, so you know exactly which plates you need for your die cutting. Two lucite plates, numbers two, and I'm going to just pop this through and cut that out there. And I can do a big one while I'm at it also. So I'll get that little guy right in there. Okay, so seahorses is the theme here. I think I'll keep that guy on top. Put these guys down below. Okay, so I left a little bit of space there for a sentiment that I might want to add later. I'm not sure where I would want to, when I would want to use this card, but I can add just a little um, strip of something, a little hello or something there. So there you go, quick and easy. One, two, three. One strip, two bases, three elements. One thing you can always count on is getting many ideas <laughs> with um, when you see one of my videos. It's like I can't stop. You keep getting, oh, I could try this, I could try that. Let's do a strip this time. It's going to be a banner. This two is going to be a piece of DSP. This time I'm going to use um, a die cut. I tried doing some stamping on the back. Didn't like that. So I'm just going to leave it plain. I'm going to use this. The die cut is from Stitch So Sweetly. And this is going to be my strip element. It's going to go behind there, a little banner cut. I'm going to keep everything sort of aligned left. We're going to do some embossing on this this time. So I'm going to make this a birthday card. So Versamark with your sentiment. I'm going to put that a little bit on the top left. Again, I'm going to line up that happy because the birthday seems to be sloping down a little bit as people's handwriting sometimes does. Okay, I think that looks good. Take my black embossing powder, sprinkle it over there, make sure it covers everything. So that's going to show up really well. Make sure you brush off the rest. I like to take a teeny tiny paintbrush to get those little specks off. Okay, let me take that to the heat tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's a nice dark image now. I'm going to layer that on real quick. This one is so easy as well. Just that little extra effort of embossing. But it's worth it. Comes out nice and dark. All right, so that's going to be my strip. Put that there like that. And then I have some cutout shells that I'm going to add to this here. Okay, again, so this isn't so plain. Just a touch of little granny apple green. There 
Then we can add our little shells on there and then pull that all together. Okay, so here are some of our designs. I'll put this in the background so you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so we have our balmy blue, our elements there. We have the ones with our pretty peacock. And the crumb cake. All using one, two, three. One strip, two bases, two layers to the base, and three elements. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I have a few more to show, but you'll have to hop on over to my blog and um, look for when I get those posted up there. So uh, make sure you come back and try this um, technique. It's a really lot of fun. Once you have that basic design, the basic element, you can really take it anywhere. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.